So um, once we have our artwork inserted, we've added the um, 21 violence here is a featured image. We have yes. an excerpt written about the mm -hmm. edition. Um, mm -hmm. You'll notice that on the page itself, and what is nice about Elementor, whatever you want to edit, you can just click on. Yeah. And um, if you can't click on it for some reason, because there's a couple different elements around it, you can come down here to something called the navigator. Mm -hmm. You just click on navigator and open it up. And let's mm -hmm. say, um, and these pages can get quite long in terms of the elements on them. Let's say you want to get back up to that hero image. You can just click on hero and it'll return you mm -hmm. to the top and you can get back to clicking in here. Okay. So um, you can see the first thing that we need to do to update this for edition 21 is to um, also update the image here. All you mm -hmm. have to do is choose. You grab image 21. It's already been marked because it's the same image. And then you insert the media. This has already been sized for you, so you don't have to think anything about it. And then down here, you just need to update the volume number mm -hmm. and the um, title. This one was called Violence in Public Health. Um, the titles of our editions, um, you know, it's like the subject and then and public health is normally the taxonomy, though mm -hmm. um, for COVID-19 and the like, we just called it COVID-19. We had several different volumes, so it's like COVID-19, one, two, and then three. You'll see here, this is something called premium blog. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, um, this is set up to capture um, articles for edition 24. We're going to need mm -hmm. to change that. This is already set up. You can see it has a blank um, background. It has, you know, the red text for the titles of the articles. Mm -hmm. And it already has the query and the featured image and everything set for that. Um, what I'm going to do just to show you how this is set up is that I'm going to delete it. Um, okay. Normally you wouldn't do that, but I just want to show you like how it's done. So you're not, um, you don't have to like guess. So to add the premium blog for edition 21 here, Oh, and we also have to change our text. You just click on this and to change text for um, text boxes and often for the titles as well. You can see I kind of cheated and did it over on the right. You wanna come over to the left. Um, that's the best and safest place to change text. So it doesn't go, I think the technical term is kaflui, just kind of crazy looking. Um, is over here, so. You have that done. The next thing we're gonna do is add, re-add our blog. Um, to get to this sort of tool and widget page, you just come up here. It looks like an old fashioned phone pad. You click it and then you can just search for blog and it brings up this tool called Premium Blog. You drag it over here, and then suddenly it's gonna look very strange. To fix that, the first thing you're gonna do is select three columns. Then you're going to come down here and fix the query. You're gonna to want to match tags.
If you look down here, you'll see that each of these tags are numbered. Um, so you want to get 21 posts. Now we haven't added any articles yet that have um, 21 posts you know, associated with it. But for now, we're just gonna collect um, 24 posts, which is what was in here before. And you can see it suddenly it brings up articles only associated with that tag. You're gonna leave the order by to date and you're gonna leave it descending. You're then gonna come over here. You can see that these two featured images are different heights. To make them all the same height, you're gonna open up featured image, set this to full, and you're gonna make this one, six, eight. And that is kind of the default that we use in terms of all of our images like this on the site. We're gonna leave this the same, except for column spacing is gonna be 10. Then you're gonna to come to post options. We're gonna leave that to excerpt. We're gonna leave this to link. So instead of dots, it's gonna say click to like basically click to read more. And then the other thing to get rid of um, is this author metadata that has nothing to do with the author of the article, but the author of the person who's like doing this on the back end. We're gonna get rid of the categories metadata and the comments metadata. The only thing that's gonna be left is the date. You don't really have to do anything with advanced settings or carousel. The next thing to change is this back end coloration because it's gray and we don't want that. To fix that, we're going to start from the bottom. You're going to go to box. You're going to hit the, this is called, this is a little globe, the circle. You're going to click on the circle and you're going to pick the blank or white background color. And you'll see already here, we've already changed the color there. You're then going to go to content box. And you're gonna change the background color again. And you can see we've gotten back to where, you know, we need to be. So now when you go to, um, you're going to go to view page. And when you go to journal, <laughs> I need to fix that. Um, you can see that here's 21 right here. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Um, so now we're ready to add. We're going to be ready to add our um, first edition, our first article rather to our 21 post page that we've created. So first here, I did not mean to click add new. Again, we don't want to recreate the wheel, right? So we're just going to click on posts. And you can, pro you can click on any number that you want from 24 to 33. So I think that we'll just... Um... Cersei, can I say something quickly? Yes. So the past few minutes, I've literally been adding a bunch of the volume. So I added, um, if, you, if you just <laughs> scroll down, I think it's... I'm on like number seven right now. Okay, I was like, 
Yeah. I, I was, I, it was kind of a twilight zone moment. So I was, they, so they look, looks great. Thank you. This yeah. So it'll, it'll just make it easier for them going in and yeah. And so, um, so wonderful. Thank you. So we're going to click 24 again, because why not? Um, this was where, you know, that was the actual post page. But here you can see mm -hmm. this longer is that's one of the articles. So we're going to hit PA duplicate. And you can see now we have our duplicated 24. And we're going to start mm -hmm. with what? Again, we're going to start with. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the title and quick edit. So we're going to make it edition 21. And the first thing we're going to do is grab the title. So you just went back to the page that had that article title open and you're going to paste it in. And you're going to come over here to the right and you're going to scroll down to edition. And you're going to make sure um, that that's not selected. And you can see here that we're going to have to add in a category because it's not in here. And the other thing you're going to have to change is this. This is the most important tag for any edition um, article. And it's this one that says 24 post. We need to change that to 21 post. So um, that the query on the 21 post edition page will pull this article and display it. So you can see that all of the basic sort of tags are here. And then we're gonna also add in bioterrorism. We're gonna add in civil liberties. And there we go. We're going to once again make this published because if you don't make it published, it will not show on the page. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hit update. It's thinking. And then we can go into our edit phase. Starting here, you can check and it looks pretty good. This here is not a hyphen, this is an M dash and we always wanna have an M dash between addition to an, like the addition, the number and the title. We're going to come over here and we're going to see that this is incredibly long. This is the slug for the article. We don't wanna keep that long. What we want to do is this, the taxonomy is the volume number, the edition number, the first author's last name. So just to check. So the word article and then the author's first author's last name. So we call this an article so that when folks are looking at the URL up here, when they look at it online, they know it's part of the journal, it's an article. And this just gives it some differentiation as to what the article um, is associated with. And remember when we weren't able to select the edition, oh, mm -hmm. it's, it's back here. So um, we have it here. Um, if that wasn't here, we would have to add the category, but um, I can actually show that another time that's been added here, but let's just pretend that wasn't there. You would need to add addition 21 and you would select where it was going to go in the taxonomy and it would have to go under addition. So you would select that there. So um, we don't need that after all. So we make sure it doesn't get added again. 
We do a little double check here to make sure that that very important 21 post is there. We keep all of our Harvard Journal related keywords and then the specific um, subject matter keywords. And then we need to replace the image, the featured image. There's a couple different ways to get new images. Um, sometimes you can get them from the article itself. Sometimes, you know, there's a nice graphic or something in the article that you can reuse here. If not, then you can always go in and just do a quick Google search. And just look for an image that's kind of interesting. Um, and is generic enough that you're not going to like upset someone <laughs> for like stealing your mm -hmm. image. Um, so actually this one is kind of interesting. I'm just right clicking and you just come in here. Um, and before we do that, we're going to copy and paste this title. And then you're going to set the name of it to be on all four counts, the name of the article. The other thing that we're going to want to do, we don't have it. So we're going to want to actually create a folder for all images associated with the 21st edition. So. We're going to want to move it into here. There we go. Oops. All right. Um, and then we just do this. This actually goes in a different folder. But here's your 20, 21 edition Im images. So you're going to set that as the featured image. It'll pop up. And we'll come down here and make sure this is Elementor full width. We're going to click update. You'll notice here that we didn't write an excerpt. Um, for articles, I often don't do that because uh, it can become quite cumbersome. And if you don't put a, an excerpt in, it just auto generates it. Then we could hit um, just edit with Elementor. And we're good to go to start transferring the rest of the article into this post. So it's thinking about loading Elementor. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, there's supposed to be a little image here, and it's going to be it's going to be our twenty one image. So, you can see I needed to move my twenty one into the correct folder so I could find it. So you're gonna grab that, it's already titled. Excellent, you're gonna insert it here and you're gonna see it's huge, right? We don't want it to be that huge. We're gonna want it to be 300 by 300, but to get it to be that size, we need to set it to 150 at first and then it's at 300 by 300. The other thing that we're gonna to want to do is um, add the, oops, why did you do that? 
we're going to want to add um, the URL associated with this journal edition to this um, image. So um, we'll come back and do that. And then it's a matter of working our way downward from the top of the page. So um, we have our title here. So we're gonna come back over here. We're gonna grab the title. We're gonna come over to the left. When you see like this kind of weird breakup if you would like to make civil liberties um, all be on one line, they're just going to add this little bit of code. It's a, it's just this um, enclosed brackets, um, and it just moves here. So this is like basically uh, carrot br carrot. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> The size is gonna stay the same for the text. It's extra large and it's H1, heading one. Then you can come down here and you're going to update the um, author's name. There's only one author for this particular article. So you're going to come over here you're going to replace it. You'll notice that the article is by, and then the author's name. All of this stays the same, and you don't have to do anything with it. Then it's time to update the citation. So, I'm just waiting for it because it's slow because of the Zoom. First thing we're going to do is update the author list. You'll notice here that it's last name, no punctuation, and then the first initial, and that's it. Then we're going to have the um, title. Here we have regular title case, you know, all caps except for prepositions and um, other markers. Here, it's just, um, it's more the traditional APA style where the title um, only um, names of places and the like are actually um, kept uppercase. Except for the first, um, except for the first word. You can see that it's the, this stays the same, and then we need to change the year, and then we need to change. Oh, we actually have to go back here and see what year it was published, twenty nineteen. So no, we don't change the year on this one. And then it's 21. And then we can come down here and grab the abstract. This is a rather long abstract. We're gonna go into this text box. Now you'll see here that um, this, this word, this title abstract is not in the same text box as this. This is a heading. This is a heading. Um, some of the challenges we've had with some of the other folks who I've tried to train on doing um, backend layout, they've tried to put everything in one great big text box and mm -hmm. um, the website is weird, so it has to be separated. If, if this um, heading with this line next to it is not there, um, I'll show you in just a moment how to get that. The same with this. 
for now, let me um, paste in the abstract. To do that, um, you just can control and paste. And you can see that it puts in a great big block of text. Mm -hmm. So we're going to want to um, undo that, you know, kind of smush down look. And you just come over to the left and you hit return. And then you scroll down, you can see the left there, things are starting to become unstacked. The other thing you probably notice is this has remained hyperlinked. We need to get rid of these hyperlinks. Otherwise, it's going to try and go to the old website. And that's going to be super strange. So we're going to do this. You just have to go through and just break the link. I wish there was a faster way to do this. But it does go by pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah, Zoom really wanted to keep that hyperlink. Um, for the moment, I'm going to leave that behind because Zoom doesn't, Zoom's not enjoying this. Once I get to this point, uh, what I like to do is hit update just to make sure that I'm not going to lose any of the changes I'm making. And you can show color that it's been saved. The other um, thing that I'm noticing here is that this particular piece is missing a um, dividing line. We always have a dividing line between the abstract and the rest of the text. So to fix that, I just add a divider. And you can see that it's very easy to move elements like it put it in the wrong place and I'm able to just grab it and pull it up. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, you can come over to the divider, grab whatever you need to move and move it around. You can see that this is the wrong color. It's, it should be this blue color. To fix that, all you need to do is come up to style Come over to this little global sign, hit primary. I'm going to come up here and you're going to hit primary. Come on. Okay. One of the interesting things here that I'm seeing is that um, there's a bit of an extra space. If you find something that you need to erase, you can just select it, right click, and then hit delete. The other thing that I'm noticing is that this was one of the, this article that I duplicated was one of the first laid out on the journal and it's actually missing um, the repetition of the title. So it'll be an opportunity for me to show you how to add um, this element. I'm just checking something here. OK, 
Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to add I'm going to add a heading under this line. So to do that, I'm just going to grab the heading feature. It's going a little slow because of Zoom. If it ever disagrees with you like that, just give it a minute. It's just because of Zoom that it's doing that. I'm going to turn off my camera because it's um, using a lot of bandwidth. And then you're going to want to duplicate this line. And you're going to put it underneath your title. And go back up. Grab your title, bring it down, and then re add it here. And then now you have everything set up at the top. It looks very nice. You have your um, abstract set up, it's ready to go. And ideally, you would have all of these little um, URL active URLs taken care of, but for now, um, we're just going to move forward with the rest of the article layout. The first thing we come to after our abstract is a new um, heading. You can see that the first heading of this article that we used um, for our template had the word introduction. You're just going to go into that heading and you're going to replace it with the, old, with the heading from the article that we're laying out. You're then going to go into the text. You're going to go down to the next heading. Grab your citation. You grab your text. Come in to the text box. And you're going to add away. Again, we have this huge block feature of the text. And we're just going to simply separate it out with a return. And you can always kind of tell like where the returns are going to go because there's a slight space in our text box. Then we're going to come on to our next heading and we're going to replace where we need to. You can see in the old article it said method here. It was a much more substantial heading. And lo and behold, we have another thing that we do not want here. This is a subheading. Subheadings are our global red color, which is just below our primary um, blue color, which is, um, you know, those in our logo. And if you did need this, this would be um, HR4, excuse me, heading four, but we don't need it. And we are going to let it go. I'm going to come back to our article. And we're going to grab our next section. Once again, massive amount of text that we need to separate out. That looks pretty good. Once again, here we've come to a subheading that we do not need. You can see that this was an earlier laid out article. If this was correct, it would be HR, it would be H4. We don't need it though, so we just get rid of it. And it's time to lay out our next heading. So we've come to kind of an impasse though. We have one text box ending here and another one starting. To fix this situation, we come back 
to our phone pad once again. We open up our widgets and we insert the heading where we need it to go. And then we can replace the holding text, go back to our old article, once again, grab the text and go down to the next heading. I always love to see conclusion because I know I'm almost done. We see our massive amount of text here. This was a pretty he textually heavy article. And she cited an entire library, which is very good for research, not so much if you're laying things out. Again, we would be ideally removing all of these these pesky citations um, links. We once again remove this. And we're also going to want to remove this random text box because we don't need it. We're going to go back to our article. And the next thing we're going to want is to put in the conclusion. I want to grab the conclusion text. And then we can get rid of these pieces that we do not need because we saw that on the old page here. The next two sections are the bibliography, the citations, and the about the author. So we're going to get rid of the discussion section. We're going to get rid of this extra text box. And then here we are at references. This was an unusual piece where we allowed the author to give us a bibliography and um, citations. We have taken great pains to um, make sure that all of the citations and references um, from now on in our articles are all uniform. But since this is kind of being grandfathered through, um, for now we're just gonna let it go. And we're gonna come over to references. We're going to get rid of this old text and we're going to cut and paste. You'll automatically see that this is massive. This is picking up some old um, tags from the old website. To fix this, we're going to do, if you have a Mac, it's gonna be command. If it's um, a PC, you're gonna hit control, but you're gonna do command A, and you're gonna come up here and you're gonna select paragraph, and suddenly the text looks normal with the rest of the text of the site. The next thing you're going to want to do is do like you did with the paragraph text from before. So you're going to separate it out. If you hold down the option key on a Mac and you hit um, the down arrow, it will take you to each, it'll go to each and every one of the citations or the paragraph breaks so that you don't have to scroll through. I'm just going to stop there for now. If these were numbered, you wouldn't necessarily need to put um, a paragraph break after every one of the citations, but unfortunately they're just alphabetical, so it would look like a huge smush block of text. The next thing we're going to want to do is grab all of these citations. And you'll know, you'll notice here, like, oh no, we've come to the end of the road. Like, how are we ever going to um, add this citation spot? It's very easy. You just hit the little phone pad again. Oh, there's a cat war going on in the background. We're going to add our heading. 
We've never, we've not had this before. So this is very unusual for the old journal and for this one to have citations and our references. So um, we're going to then add our text box. And then we can easily just add the citations. And um, the great things about these is that they are all numbered. So we don't necessarily have to add um, a space in between each of these. One thing to warn you about, um, if you try to hit a hard return after something that's numbered in a text box, you'll notice that it creates you know, another number there. To avoid that, and you want to create a space between the one and the two, you hold down your shift key. And that's called a soft return, and it will allow you to have a space and not add another number. The other thing we're going to want to do is get rid of these little um, sync markers. Um, this in the old site would take you back up to where the number one was. You just hit return and get rid of them. All the way through. The other thing I like to do is between references and the conclusion is add another divider just to um, break things up a little bit visually. And you're going to want to make it that primary color. And then it's time to add um, our about the author section. For the website, we don't put a regular heading in. What I do is I type in the word heading. It's a premium heading and we come over here and we add it to the site. It's thinking about being added to the site. There we go. Okay. It does not enjoy being on Zoom. Okay. So we're going to need two of these. So I'm just going to replicate it now. Or duplicate it, rather. So for this first one, we're going to come over here. We're going to make it style three, or not style four, style three. And um, we're going to change premium title to about the author. If there was more than one author, it would be about the authors. And we're going, oops, we're going to spell that correctly. And we're going to take out that weird extra space, I think, is there? And then we're going to come over here and we're going to change this to um, knockout text and we're going to make this blue. This is going to be the author's name. I just scroll back to the top. I just grab it. You just change it. And then it's time to just add a text section. We come over here and we just grab the about the author's text. And then we just add it here. Again, it's doing that weird thing with the heading. So we're just going to change it to paragraph. And then we're going to hit update. And she was a really interesting author because she did e-prime for a living. Um, 
we're going to make this on bold. And this is basically um, the entire process in a nutshell. Um, if you are working with newer articles, the bio is going to be in the authors. Um, it's like an author listing, and that's going to be on the article processing dashboard. And I think that was um, given to you. The old articles are going to be in this website. The new articles are going to be listed here. And um, if you wanted to get their biography, you would come over to the author details page. And um, you would just scroll over and their biography is listed um, on this spreadsheet. And um, here it is, professional bio, brief bio. And then you would just grab it and, um, and paste it into that section. Now, one word of warning, if you get something like, you know, I like cats or some, some people have done some really weird bios, let me know and we'll work it out. <laughs> Um, we might need to make it third person for them or professional lit up. Um, but uh, most of the time folks do it. The other thing to warn you about is um, you see how I stopped part way through in terms of putting spaces between things. When you do that, um, I don't recommend doing that because once you go back in and you start moving around, you can see it got rid of your original work in terms of putting in space. And so um, not a lot of fun, but, um, and you can see too, because of that weird spacing issue, it's ever more important to um, make sure you use, you know, not try to put um, the headings inside the text boxes for the regular text in the line. So this is um, how we lay out articles. Um, it's a lot. I have a whole, um, that document I sent has these directions kind of with um, various screenshots. And then there is uh, a work through, a work back um, with each of like a checklist, I should say, going through all of the um, elements that need to be addressed to finalize um, layout of these articles. Um, with this, all you need to do is go to view page and it allows you to see like the article laid out. Sometimes, um, you know, for all of um, one's work, it will still not um, be Elementor full width when it does the, when it publishes. So just to fix that, you just go into edit post, scroll down. You can see that it defaulted back to that default template for whatever reason, and you hit update. You can just go into view post and it will be happy again. So. Oh, I see what happened. So here's our article that's been laid out. We can go ahead and view it. You can see that it's full elemental full width, which allows it to go the full width of the page. Um, this is all boxed in, looks pretty good. Um, obviously I need to go in and fix some of these little hyperlink things because you can see like that's gonna be a problem and I'll try to go to the old site. And the other um, thing that we can check is we go up here, we hit our journals. And we hit 21.
And the thing that we can do now is we can update the query for this log. So um, we just go into edit with Elementor. Cersei, I did notice something. Um, so the the upper title says like edition 21, but then the articles underneath say edition 24. Oh, I know. Here, I'm gonna wanna show the last thing we need to do is this. We once we have like the first of our articles associated with this edition laid out, we can come back and fix the query. You see here it's where it says 24 post. We're going to get rid of that. It's not going to like that. Um, we're going to hit, we're going to type in 21. And there you go. So 14,000 easy steps. <laughs> so, yeah. So you can see it's like not, it's not like, it's not brain surgery, which is funny because like Candace is a neurosurgeon, but it's not brain surgery, but it's, it's a lot of stuff and um, it can be a little annoying and time consuming, but. Um, you know, yeah. brain surgery is the same thing. It's a lot of very simple steps and put together is complex, but if you do the steps right, then things turn out well. Can I tell you like the thought of that, like it's like step one and then I would be on the floor fainted. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm sure it would be fine, actually. Yeah, the you know the thing that's interesting too. Like I think people like ex, you know think that everything's going to be exposed, but like such a small portion is exposed. Like 